Yo, what's going on guys? Arix here. Welcome back to another video for Lost Ark. And in this one, I want to talk about Guardian Raids. Another one of the end game activities. And for those of you guys that are Monster Hunter players, which I'm sure a lot of you guys on this channel are, this is basically the Monster Hunter style quest. It'll see you go into a map where you don't know the current location of the monster. Using a flare can of course help you locate this. I'll speak more on this in a moment. But you then go and find the monster, you battle it. It doesn't have a visible health bar. So of course you are whistling down its health again in true Monster Hunter fashion. You also have limited uses of potions. You can also only die a number of times, but in doing so, it is also a chance to get more rewards. They're incredibly fun. They do, of course, get pretty challenging later on, and there are plenty of guardians to go after. So much like we did with Chaos Dungeons, in this video, I'll put together a complete guide to guardian raids, going over how you unlock them, what you need to know about them, mechanics, all that stuff. So if you guys do enjoy this, you do find it helpful, a like would be super appreciated. If you guys have been enjoying the Lost Ark content, make sure you stick around. If you're new to Lost Ark, then definitely keep a lot for the videos because we're going to be going through all the different endgame activities in separate videos giving you everything you need to know. So to begin with, first things first, how do you unlock Guardian Raids? Again, you will need to be level 50 and you will need to make your way to Vern Castle. Following the natural story quest will put you on the path to this once you've unlocked the Chaos Dungeons. There are actually two Guardian Raid related quests. The first one you can find up in the top right hand corner in the Queen's Castle area. This is more so a quest that you can follow which will basically have you uh, hunt a specific Guardian and you get some rewards for doing so. However, in order to unlock the ability to do Guardian Raids, what you actually need to do is open up your journal and go and find this quest here that says guardian raid qualification when you accept this it will send you to speak to the person near the guardian raid board located here on the map again this is the sort of part of the map that is uh, where you find a lot of the end game activities doing so will have you sign the certificate and you can then basically interact with the guardian board and begin those raids so again if you kind of got to the point where maybe you followed the purple exclamation mark quest and you still can't interact with the board and you're like why can't i do this open up your journal accept that quest, complete it, and you can then go forward. So with them unlocked, let's talk about Guardian Raids. When you interact with the board and you open up this menu, this is what will greet you, much like with the Chaos Dungeons. There are, of course, various different things here, various different tiers. They, of course, increase in level with a gear score requirement, but let's go through the most notable things. Top left-hand corner, you have Guardian Souls Earned. Much like the Chaos Dungeons, you can also do two of these a day, and each time you harvest a Guardian Soul, it will fill up one of these nodes, and of course, once you've done that, you can go back in and do them again, but you won't really be getting any rewards. It is worth noting that if you want to go in maybe to help someone you do have the option to uncheck harvest soul so you can still defeat it without it using up one of your quota for that day so if you're after a particular guardian because you're pursuing some gear but you want to help a friend with another one you don't have to waste your daily limits it's also worth noting that when you do fight the guardian and once you defeat it it will drop its soul you need to interact with this soul in order to get the loot doing so will see a ton of loot drop on the ground and that is basically how you get your rewards it's important to do this if you defeat the guardian and you forget to interact with that and you go back to town it will still have consumed one of your guardians for the day but you of course course will have missed out on the loot so don't forget to do that of course on top of that you have the rest bonus again much like with the chaos dungeons this effectively is your catch-up mechanic so every single time you don't do a guardian raid for the day you get 10 points added to the rest bonus bar you can accumulate up to 100 points and every 20 points will allow you to harvest one additional guardian soul per kill so basically if you miss the guardian raids for a day or two then when you go back and defeat it you'll actually have two souls to harvest in essence allowing you to catch up on some of the loot you would have missed out on otherwise so again pretty nice system Below that, of course, you have your raid levels. Every raid level contains four different guardians. You need to slay each guardian on the current level at least once to unlock the next level. But of course, guardians of higher raid levels reward you with higher tier and rarity drops, but they also have the item level accordingly. So you will need to complete these and level up your gear or hone your gear in order to qualify for them. Page also tells you the weakness of that particular guardian, so you can use this to prepare. This is definitely one of those events that you want to make sure you prepare ahead of time. Using consumable items is also a fantastic way to battle these. So using this to work out whether they're weak to darkness, light, earth, lightning, water, fire, that sort of thing can definitely help increase your chances of success. On the left hand side you have the guardians available, on the right you have your current record for fighting that guardian, the expected rewards, again the uh, items you can hope to get from those, ranging from accessories, currency, other things like that. And below you have the restrictions, again keep in mind guardian raids are different, resurrections are limited to three times, you have a 20 minute time limit, and potion uses on the F1 bar are not allowed, so you can only use the ones that go in your numerical bar, and of course those are also limited, you can only have five per life. Again, this supports matchmaking, so you can either go in solo if you want, with some randoms, or with your pre-made team. 
So with that being said, let's turn our attention to the actual raid itself and talk about some of the mechanics. You begin by spawning into the zone and you'll find yourself in a resupply zone. When you step outside of here, you cannot change the items in your bar. So if you want to change your healing potions, you want to change your support items, carry things like grenades, flares, other things like that, make sure you've either done that before you even go on the raid or whilst you're standing inside this circle. It's also worth noting that this can be used to replenish your items. So all while you're outside the circle and you're battling, you can only use the number of items you have available. If, however, you happen to go through all of your potions and maybe you don't want to risk dying and potentially making the team wipe, you can come all the way back here. Stepping inside the circle will replenish your items. Of course, if you die and you spawn back here, it will also replenish those items. So do keep that in mind because in Guardian Raids, in the top left-hand corner, you can see these three nodes. You can only die, much like in Monster Hunter, three times, and doing so will cause a wipe. So you do need to be very careful in your lives. So if you do think you're gonna be a liability, do consider restocking. Yes, sometimes it will slow you down a little bit, but if that means the difference between you winning or your team wiping, it's definitely worth doing. One particular item that is very useful for Guardian Raids are the flares. Flares, sometimes you can get them as rewards from chests that you can open. Additionally, they can also be crafted, or if you're really out, you can get them from the auction house, because when you first load into a Guardian Raid, you do not know where the Guardian is located. Using a flare will then tell you where it is on the map for a brief period of time, so they're definitely worth carrying. If you don't have them, you just have to wander around the map until you find it, but note that does eat into your completion time. Now, of course, every Guardian does have their own unique mechanics. In this video, I'm going to keep it pretty broad, but if you guys would like Guardian guides, going over the different Guardians, their moves, and sort of strategies for fighting them, definitely let us know. But basically, watch their movements, learn the Telegraph moves. They do have situations where they will glow blue, and if you use a counter move, you can stagger them. So, of course, this can be useful for some monsters that will often punish you or trap you, but do keep in mind if you get the timing wrong this, you can also be hit. So, effectively, battle it, fight it, take it down. Once you've done that, interact with the soul, collect your loot, and you're done. Those are Guardian Raids. Just a little rundown on what you need to know, how you unlock it, how they work, and a few things like that. Hope you guys found this helpful. If you guys have been enjoying the Lost Ark content, again, make sure you stick around. We will be going over all the other endgame activities, so if you want to know more about Abyss Dungeons, other things like that, make sure you stay tuned on the channel. And if you guys haven't caught our video on Chaos Dungeons and want to know how they work, then be sure to click this video to find out more.